Kim Colley here at FS Tech 2025. I have Jake Hustard with me from Worldwide Technology. Jake, can you tell me a little bit about what Worldwide Technology does and how you help restaurant operators? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having us. We're super excited to be here. Worldwide kind of grew up in the, the technology reseller space 35 years ago, publicly or pri privately held company. And what we've really had to figure out over time is that technology investments really didn't find their full value unless they were aligned to business outcomes. So that's really where we find ourselves. Find ourselves at that intersection of what business wants and there's outcomes, but what technology can provide. And we try to do that scalable, securely, and ultimately with ROI. And we've been really, really fortunate to find our way into the fast casual QSR restaurant space over the past few years, working with some really, really great bands. A lot of them here at, the, at FS Tech, as well as some of the vendors. So our work with Jersey Mike's and Jack in the Box and Panera Bread has really let us get a foothold in this industry. And we're super excited about what comes next as we continue to develop more and more of these technology solutions. So right now, a lot of the restaurants are having trouble with data in a bunch of different places and they're siloed, right? Like their POS systems, their third party delivery. Yeah. How are you helping to bring that all together? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's one of the biggest limitations that we do find, especially with this emergence of AI. We can't go five feet without tripping over it. And it's really kind of brought it to bear that a lot of it is actually organizational inside a company, right? A marketer is tasked with growing really, really quickly or operations needs new tooling or supply chain or procurement need to go find more tools and they find them because there's a great vendor ecosystem out there in retail, QSR, Vestec, and, and you know certainly fast casual, no, no strangers to this either, but point solutions are limited, right? You end up with kind of limited visibility. You don't really get those full insights. You end up with multiple dashboards and you end up with this really disconnected set of ecosystem, which might provide a lot of value for one part of your business, but you don't see the whole thing end to end. And now as we move into this new world where digitization and AI and all these new capabilities are putting more and more pressure to grow the business, take out costs, without that unified data structure, you can't do that. So we work with both the business side to understand where are the bottlenecks, what are the things that they really need, what are those metrics they're really trying to impact, and then bring that down almost to the byte level. So how does that work from networking, connectivity at the store, the compute, is it in the cloud, is it at the edge, and then all the way back to those really key components that we know are going to be valuable to deliver those experiences, both for the customer and the employee. So what does it look like when all of that's working together? Yeah, I think for the consumer, they don't notice it, they don't see it, right? You see friction, you don't feel the things that work really, really well. Those magical kind of surprise and delight experiences, you don't know that there's ones and zeros flying behind there. You don't know that someone was smart enough to connect their supply chain and their, you know, their inventory and their labor to get you to that promotion that drove you in, that got you fed on the way home with, you know, screaming kids after soccer. For operators, it's really about efficiency. Are we spending our time on the things that matter most? Can we get in front of guests more? Can we think about our business more? Can we pour more into our employees to get retention back? And then at the corporate level, it's, it's margin. Are we taking out costs? Are we managing our stack in such a way where we know we can grow and be a differentiator in this space? So it's, it takes a lot of different forms based upon you know, who's, in the, who's in the mix and what they care about. And it gets really complex between corporately owned stores, operators, franchisees. So we have to look at a lot of different aspects across a lot of the spectrum to really make sure that these solutions come together so that those, those experiences do work and, multi, and ultimately it comes back to real ROI, things that matter. Are we doing the things that drive AUV growth a margin accretively? That's what we care about. Worldwide technology brings a whole, I guess, world of experience, <laughs> even outside of the restaurant yeah. industry. Can you tell us a little bit about how that is allowing you to help the restaurant operators? Yeah, it's a really good point. I think when we're looking at being almost tasked to predict the future, it's really, really important to be able to really accurately and thoroughly describe the present. And for us, the fact that we are this massive company that works with most of the Fortune 500s, gives us a unique opportunity to take things from healthcare and life sciences and manufacturing and financial services and figure out a way to bring those things to the food service space. So think about uh, manufacturing. Everything is all about throughput. It's all about preventive maintenance on machinery. So how do we take those models and apply those to restaurant quality? How do I know that my peripherals are gonna stay up in the store? How do I know when a freezer is about to go out? So we're trying to pull that forward. We learn a lot from 
the entertainment space. We do a lot of work with some companies not too far from here in Orlando where experience is the entirety of what they're trying to drive. It's not about punch cards and loyalty points and things like that, but how do you use computer vision to really understand the flow of people and the experience that they're driving to keep them safe and to move them through and get them to a place where there's just magical things happening through technology that they don't even understand is even in the back. So we like to learn from those industries, see what's coming, read around the corner a little bit if you can, and then figure out how do we take that and make that applicable to the restaurant operators, franchisees, and the folks that we serve in this space. The restaurant landscape continuously changing. We've been talking about this. What are some things you think operators should be looking to as we go forward? I think the, the thing that we see companies that do really, really well, the ones who who again, have accurately described their present. What do they care most about? What is their culture? What is their brand promise? What do they stand for in the industry? And then find ways to bring technology to make that better. Do not try to automate hospitality, automate the things that get in the way of hospitality. I think that's the, what I took away from the Nest session yesterday is really what that is. So I think what we're seeing is, is companies really kind of going back to basics. How do I understand customers at a better level so that I can deliver them real meaningful promotions and drive real loyalty outside of points and you know coupons? But then how do I think about what that loyalty really looks like in the store? How do I empower my employees in a much better way? And where we're seeing an enormous amount of uptake is just simply demand forecasting and labor. So it's good old machine learning and scenario planning. That stuff is really winning right now which then frees up capital to go do some of the more, I think, bleeding edge things, because you have to continually test, right? You can't wait in this space. So you need to find partners and you need to find opportunities to take costs out of your business, align on things that do provide ROI, and then reinvest that and place some, don't launch space shuttles, launch a bunch of bottle rockets, right? And see what's actually gonna fly and then keep moving from there. But I don't think that we're gonna see massive robotics or you know, massive computer vision or you know, fully automated stores for a while for the majority of us. So I say, get it back to basics, make sure your network connectivity is good at your store, it's an overlooked component of it, and get your data in a place where you can evolve and adapt quickly and be much less you know, future-proof, I guess. But you've gotta have the information and the infrastructure to get it done, I would do that now. Amazing. Well, Jay, thank you so much for joining us here. You've given us a lot to think about. No, thanks. We're just so pleased to be here and to keep working forward. So thanks for all you guys do.